Welcome to Living Your Greatness. Each episode, we bring on great people to inspire you to achieve your greatness. We discuss topics all related to health and wellness. Listen to world-class stories, learn valuable lessons, and turn knowledge into action. It is now time for you to unlock your inner greatness. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Living Your Greatness. This is your host, Ben Mummy, and today we actually have a really special day that I am fired up to share with you guys. It is our first solo episode ever. So I am stoked to be here uh, where I will be leading you on this discussion one-on-one. So in each solo episode, you can expect to receive valuable knowledge, wisdom, and even life lessons. The goal is to equip you with the mindset strategies, the tactics, and the tools to help you live a great life. So again, I am super pumped to do the first ever solo episode here on Living Your Greatness. And if you are new to Living Your Greatness, I welcome you here. The purpose of this podcast is to inspire millions of people across the world to achieve greatness and enhance their overall personal well-being. It is my desire to become one of your greatest mentors. So that being said, let's now start with our first solo episode. The topic that we will explore today is how do we achieve personal well-being through wellness? And I don't think there's a better quote to start off with than one that was said by Albert Einstein. Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Most of us on a daily basis use some type of vehicle. Whether you use a bike, a car, a tractor, a wheelchair, or a scooter, the common element for each is a tire. So if we think about a tire, it is symmetrical, right? And it moves easily to help us attain smooth travel. But when that tire is flat and it pops, travel is now impacted. You can't go anywhere. It is a bumpy ride. And eventually you'll come to a stop. So using that same analogy, if we apply that to our sense of well-being in our lives, there is a balance that must be achieved to keep our bodies and spirits strong enough for our journey called life. So while health and wellness seem very similar, we hear these words a lot. We use them on a daily basis. They are actually different. So to start off, before we go into the wellness dimensions and break them up separately, let's first get a better understanding of the difference between health and wellness. So when we think of health, you know, it is defined as the absence of infirmity, disease, or discomfort. Our health is guided by a physician or a care provider using testing, medications, and scientific data to determine the presence or absence of a disease. A person seeking to be healthy will respond to physical symptoms and strive to keep their bodies free of symptoms or disease. They may actually use medication or other holistic approaches but the goal is to remain free of disease. Now, when we think about wellness, it's a little bit different here. So wellness is the proactive approach to creating balance throughout all dimensions of living. So that means financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically, environmentally, occupationally, intellectually, and socially. So if we think about that, you know, someone could be financially well, but not physically well, or someone could be physically well, but not financially well. Each person identifies their own strengths, their challenges, and their priorities based on eight key areas. They can then adjust their life with the goal of becoming balanced in all key areas. So wellness is not merely the absence of illness or distress. It is striving for positive physical, mental, and social well-being. It is a life process of making decisions that support a more balanced life and enable you to maximize your true potential. So there are always opportunities for enhancing your wellness. And a good place is first to start with reflection and then creating a goal with intention to move forward and look to improve. So that being said, we're going to go through now the eight wellness dimensions. So the first wellness dimension, this is emotional wellness. So this means understanding your own feelings and expressing your emotions in a constructive way. It is also the ability to manage stress and cope with life's challenges. So emotional wellness is more than feeling happy. In fact, a key part of emotional wellness is accepting that you won't feel content all or maybe even most of the time. 
by acknowledging your feelings and working through them, you can become more in touch with your inner life and practice emotional wellness. Processing your emotions through writing, talk therapy, or even in conversations with people you trust can make this task easier. So emotional wellness can help you manage your stress and build resilience in the face of temptations or setbacks. The second wellness dimension that I want to talk to you about today is environmental wellness. So this involves considering the interactions between your environment, your community, and yourself. The environment includes not only the natural environment, but also your social environment. Learn about the natural and social environment around you and behave in a way that fosters a safe and healthy environment for others. The environments of where you live, work, and relax can have a huge impact on your mood and your overall personal well-being. So spend time in safe, comfortable spaces as often as you can with people that lift you up. The third wellness dimension that I want to talk about is intellectual wellness. So this means engaging in creative and mentally stimulating activities, expanding your knowledge, and imparting knowledge to others. You could develop intellectual wellness through academic pursuits, but also through cultural, artistic skills, or even skill-based learning. So whether you realize it or not, you're always on the lookout for new ways to stimulate and engage your brain. But if you seek out this stimulation without care or any consideration, you may find yourself participating in passive activities like scrolling on social media or even watching hours of television. So while these activities can actually be satisfying at the moment, They lack the depth and the meaning needed for true intellectual wellness. Instead, I encourage you to cultivate your curiosity by engaging in challenging activities that interest you. So learn how to play the piano, write a short story, read a book by your favorite author. Staying open to new ideas, interests, and wisdom enriches your days and makes life worth living. The fourth wellness component that I want to talk about is occupational wellness. So this is finding fulfillment from your work and your study, contributing meaningfully and continuing to expand your skills and strengths. Occupational wellness is relevant throughout our lives, whether it is our academic study, paid work, or even through volunteering. So engaging in meaningful work allows you to live out your values, whether it's a day job, going to school, or even volunteering. Doing work that you are passionate about can make you feel so much better in your life. If you do work that you truly love, you'll have another reason to really get fired up to want to wake up and jump out of bed. The fifth wellness dimension that I want to talk about is physical wellness. So this comes from making choices to avoid harmful habits and practice actions that support your physical body, health, and safety. It includes choices about physical activity, healthy eating, sleeping, safer sex, getting medical care, and the use of alcohol or other drugs as well as tobacco. Something that I always like to say, and I say this a lot to my students, that your body is the vessel that moves you through the world. It is vital that you treat it with kindness. So that being said, participating in regular physical activity, getting restful sleep, and eating healthy foods can reduce your risk of illness, bolster your mood, and increase your energy levels, promoting both emotional and physical wellness. The sixth wellness dimension that I want to talk about now is financial wellness. This is achieved when people can apply financial knowledge and financial literacy confidently to manage their economic lives effectively. That includes making good financial decisions, spending within one's means, and also planning for emergencies and preparing for your future. While this might sound dull to some of you, getting a handle on your finances can relieve a surprising amount of stress from your daily life. Never knowing how much money you have left for food each month or constantly worrying about rent pay or even retirement can be very emotionally taxing. So take the time to understand your current spending habits and monetary needs. Create a budget that cuts down on excess spending and allows you to save for your future. You can even help yourself be grateful by calculating how much money you're saving every month. Making a safety net for your current and future self can give you the comfort and peace of mind. The seventh wellness dimension that I want to talk about is social wellness. So this actually refers to the quality of the relationships you have and how you interact with others. Building supportive relationships, dealing with conflict effectively, and making the time for socializing to contribute to your overall wellness. 
We need other people in our lives. It's just a fact. Social support is one of the most fundamental human needs. Close friends and family members are there to celebrate the good times with you, but also be there for you during the bad times when you need care for. So because of this, it is vital that you foster close relationships and make an effort to connect with at least one person you're close to every day. The eighth wellness dimension I want to talk about now is spiritual wellness. So this refers to having values or beliefs that provide a sense of meaning and purpose to your life and considering whether your actions align with your values. You can also take time to connect with something bigger than yourself. A healthy spiritual life can help you feel more connected to yourself, others, and the world around you. If you want to develop a sense of spirituality, it is important to take part in reflective activities that allow you to understand and practice your values and beliefs. Attend a place to worship, go for a walk, practice yoga, try meditation, but most importantly, do whatever feels right for you that works. Taking the time to perform these activities on a regular basis can improve your overall wellness and increase your sense of purpose and allow you to better understand your goals in a larger context. While incorporating these eight dimensions of wellness may improve your day-to-day life, it's important to remember that you are not wearing a bulletproof vest. As wellness is not the absence of illness or stress, it's having the mental and physical fortitude to cope with these challenges in life. Regardless of life's circumstances, you can always strive for greater wellness. So I want to take the time here at the end of this episode to really thank you for being here. Thank you for continuing to be part of this community. I really do sincerely hope this episode has added value to your life. If you do enjoy listening to my podcast, I really encourage you to hit the subscribe button so we could spread the word with as many people and continue to create this amazing community of passionate people who are striving to live their greatness and improve their overall personal well-being. So to end off this podcast, I want to end it off by wishing you all the best to continuing to live your greatness. So I wish everyone a great day. Thank you for being here. Much love, Ben. Thank you for listening to the Living Your Greatness podcast. If this show has added value, please subscribe, leave a rating, and make a review.